Hello everyone and welcome back to the God First Life Second Podcast where we are living and contending the truth of God for the glory of God. Good to be back on the podcast episode with you guys. Um, I have to take a little break because we currently have an addition to the family uh, that was born last month. Zakaya, our little baby girl, our fifth child, uh, was born last month and um, I am telling you already she is something else to behold. Full of personality. Uh, she actually, we saw some of that while she was in the womb, actually. Uh, and so it's just amazing to see her now with us, uh, with the family. All the, the other four children are loving her so much. And, and uh, she's just loving it all. We're just soaking it all in. So it's been a been quite a busy time for the Mason household. But we have been blessed with a gift from God. And we are grateful for that. And my wife is an amazing woman. An amazing mother. Uh, she has uh, really been... Uh, uh, strong and uh, spiritually strong. Her wisdom has shown in this time. Her strength uh, in the Lord has shown in this time. And I am grateful for her and grateful for everything that she's uh, endured and went through. And I'm there for her, supporting her as I possibly, most as I possibly can. Because as you can imagine, with our children, our, our oldest daughter is eight years old, all the way down to an infant, five kids. So you 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 kind of can imagine our household and. <laughs> And, and, and her holding it down as the mother and the, and the woman of the house. And she's amazing. Um, and so I'm thankful for her, my wife. But yes, that's been our our, our, our last month or so uh, is enjoying that. And so I'm back and I wanted to take some time to, to discuss what's going on right now. Uh, man, there is so much going There is so much going on. Um, but the main thing that pops out right now is what's happening with uh, the vaccine mandates and our president, Joe Biden, and what he's saying and will have to happen for companies with 100 employees or more uh, ha- will be mandated through OSHA to have to, uh, you know, force their employees to get a vac- vaccine. And so we're, we're looking at what's happening right now. And, and right now, before we get into this, though, let's put on our biblical lens, right? Because that's what Christians have to do in order to see what's going on. There's a big picture, okay, that's, that's, that you should be looking at, that you should be discerning and seeing. And, and none of it has to do with fear. None of it has to do with fear of COVID. None of it has to do with fear of the vaccine. All of it has to do with the glory and the, and the admonition and the, the, the will of God being played out in this season, in this, in this time, and going forward. That, that, that's what it's all about. That's what all this is about. And if we make it about something else, we lose sight, we lose track of what God has called us to do and be here on earth in this time, in this season as Christians. So that, that, that's where we want to come from. Let's put on those lens first before we get into this and before we start discussing this so we understand that, hey, we're discerning from a biblical lens. We're discerning with the Holy Spirit. Right. With the center of everything being Christ. Right. And his glory. So, yes, Joe Biden has uh, came out just recently uh, in a second uh, press conference discussing the updates on the vaccine. And he discussed what the plan was going forward about what what should happen with the uh, those companies and those employees and try to, you know, address some of the misinformation and everything that's going on. But let's take a listen to a little bit of what he had to say in his press conference that he just did. First, we have to do more to vaccinate the 66 million unvaccinated people in America. It's essential. The vaccine requirements that we started rolling out in the summer are working. They're working. The Labor Department is going to soon be issuing an emergency rule for companies with 100 or more employees to implement vaccination requirements in their among their workforce. Every day, we see more businesses implementing vaccination requirements, and the mounting data shows that they work. Businesses and organizations that are implementing requirements are seeing their vaccination rates rise by an average of 20 percent or more to well over 90 percent, the number of employees vaccinated. Let's be clear. Vaccination requirements should not be another issue that divides us. That's why we continue to battle the misinformation that's out there. 
and companies and communities are setting up there, uh, stepping up as well to combat these the, the misinformation. Southwest Airlines, at the head of the pilot, the head of the pilots' union and its CEO, dismissed critics who claim vaccination mandates contributed to flight disruptions. School board members, religious leaders, and doctors across the country are fighting misinformation and educating people about the importance of vaccines. All of these efforts are going to help us continue moving the dial to eliminate this disease. Second, we're going to continue protecting the vaccinated. This work, this week, the Food and Drug Administration and the FDA is reviewing data on Moderna and Johnson & Johnson boosters. We expect a final decision from the FDA and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, in the next couple of weeks. If they authorize the boosters, which will be strictly made based on the science, that decision will be based on the science, this will mean all three vaccines will be available for boosters. Already, more than one out of three eligible seniors have gotten their third shot. Okay, so did you guys hear that? You hear a lot of talk about, it's all about the vaccine. The vaccine is, is the protection. It's all about the vaccine. It's all about the vaccine. That's what you heard, right? Then you hear say, this is not something we're gonna use for division. Just to a minute later, say, we're gonna to continue to protect the vaccinated. <laughs> You can't make this up. It's not about the vision, but we're going to make it about the vaccinated. You unvaccinated people, eh, you know, you're a problem. So, again, this is what we get from leadership. This is the this is the man that's running the country, supposedly. This is what we get from him. No mention of natural immunity. No mention of what are the effects and things that are happening from people who get the vaccination. No mention. No mention of people who have died with COVID fully vaccinated with a third dose. No mention. No mention of, of any risks, liabilities that may come from taking the vaccine. No mention. No mention of the fact that you actually get COVID with the vaccine. Then you can actually spread it to family members and loved ones, church members, whatever it may be. No mention. See, this is where this is where we end up with a problem of division that comes from not only just from the government, but also inside the body of Christ. When we don't pay attention to the truth and we only listen, we only listen to lead people say what they have to say about the vaccine. And then you just say we take that as face value. And if you listen to this guy speak on it, it's just and him and Fauci. It's just, hey, the vaccine, the vaccine, the vaccine is the answer, the answer, the answer, protect, protect, protect. But the reality is that's not what's happening. Does the vaccine help you? Yes, we all know that. It helps you with your immune system to fight off the virus. Absolutely, 100%. But it's not effective past that. So the COVID strains and the COVID that, that come, the mutations and all the things that happen, those things are still kicking off, right? People are still getting sick, right? It's still spreading, right? But the vaccine is only protecting or helping the person who has it. They don't speak that way. They speak as if it's protecting the people around you and it's this it's this this now you're you're free to go and go into society and live life because you now have the protection you need for you and everybody else. And that's not how it works. So that that lets us know as Christians we can't trust what the government is saying from people that's talking at podiums or talking on the news because they're not going to give you the full story. So that's so that's always going to be the case. That's never going to change. And it's almost like this is an opportunity or a, a way for them to push something and, and say that it needs to be it needs to happen. It needs to be pressured. Employees have to require it has to be mandated. You like you're pushing something. But the, 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 the you talking about the science, the science and the results and the data say that this doesn't just should not be mandated. And I'm going to get more into that later. This should not be mandated. Not according to the data. It doesn't make any sense for what? Just so people can say, hey, I, I won't be as sick. I may not uh, I may not end up in the hospital. That's a personal decision. You want to do that? That's great. I think you should. Go ahead. But to mandate something that only does that and nothing else, 
it doesn't make any sense. If it was stopping the virus, stopping the spread, mandates seem to make sense because now we're actually doing something to help with the health and well-being of American citizens, right? But that's not the case. I mean, again, from spreading it to other American citizens, yeah, you're helping yourself individually, but you're not helping other individuals not get sick or, or spread the virus. Again, no mention of natural immunity. No mention. Doesn't make any sense. Why are you doing that? Why are you producing these vaccines in a, in a 400, almost $500 billion industry, the pharmaceutical industry, making it free across the board and then trying now to introduce it to children? What's going on? If it's not stopping the virus, if it's not stopping the spread, something else is happening here that is being pressed and pushed like this. So we have to think that way as Christians with the process, what's going on, sit back and look. And I talked about this in my last episode, but I'm getting more now into what is this, what is this telling us? What is this kind of pointing to, right? Not you're, you're thinking critically, you're paying attention, you're listening, but what is this pointing to? Where is this leading us? So we have an example of where this is possibly leading us by a, a actual U.S. Congresswoman, a representative from Iowa named Cindy Axon. Cindy Axon got on a virtual town hall meeting and she had quite a, you know, a little bit to say about Christians, specifically Christians and the Christian right, she would say, weaponizing religion and calling them, you know, crazies. Let's take a listen to this. All the schools are back wanting to put mask mandates in and all the, the anti-vaxxer crazies are out there with their, you know, their, it's, it's, a, it's a hot mess. I'll, I'll be honest, the, 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 you know, Christian right is, you know, the, everything under the guise while they hold a cross and, you know, for God or whatever, and they and they use it like a weapon. And it's painful to watch because they've, uh, they've weaponized religion, they've weaponized politics. Did you hear that? So this, this representative, this is someone who's in the White House, representing Iowa, speaking that way about Christians. Speaking that way about people who supposedly follow Christ, who have a cross and using religion as a weapon, right? Fighting the mass mandates. They're the issue. They're the problem. We just get these Christians to stop fighting what we're trying to do, what we're trying to progress. Then we can, we can do something. It's these Christians. You see that mindset? You see that? Mind it's those Trump supporters, right? And you get, the, you know, that idea, the concept that if you support Trump, then you're this crazy alt-right Christian right wing, you know, Christian that, you know, doesn't know left from right. And it's just a crazy Trump supporter and you're evil and you're a racist and all this kind of stuff. So people that are associating being a Christian with being a Trump supporter are doing that out of absolute idiocy. Absolute idiocy. And. The, 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 the narratives and agendas, the lies and manipulation that they keep getting from CNN, MSN, MSNBC and all the other news stations that promote this nonsense. That's 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 what's going on, because being a Christian has absolutely nothing to do with supporting Trump. Nothing. To associate the two is to say you don't know anything about Christianity. Right. Biblical Christianity. And everything that you see and know about Christianity is centered on politics, which means you don't know anything about Christianity. So for Christians, we have to be ready to say, no, 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 no. We, you might have voted for Trump. You might not have voted for Trump. It has nothing to do with your faith, your actual faith in Jesus Christ. If you have faith in Jesus Christ, hopefully you made a decision that was right with your conscience when you voted and you vote, you know, you support this particular uh, person in office, this particular, this person is not in all, whatever, whatever you do with politics or in America that has to do with the government, hopefully you're making decisions that would honor God and be sit right with your conscience. If so, that's where it stops and starts pretty much for a Christian. It has nothing to do with I'm associated to this person. Therefore, I am a Christian. It's ridiculous. That's utter, utter, utter foolishness. It makes no sense at all. You don't understand Christianity if you speak that way. But because the news media has been pushing narratives for years while Trump was in office, 
pushing there. So yes, are there Christians that support Trump? Of course, right? There's Christians that support Joe Biden. There's Christians that support uh, Kamala Harris. I mean, yes, right? Should they be doing that? That's a different discussion. But to, to associate Christian with Trump or Christian with people who fight mass Mondays, or Christian with people who are anti-vax, right? That's just, again, that's the narrative. That's the push. Because if I can do it, if I can demonize you, then I can demonize your faith. Then I can, I can do a couple things. I can push down and suppress the righteousness, the truth of righteousness, right? I can suppress that truth, God's truth. I can put that down and say it's a, it's a demonic, it's an evil thing. Look at those Trump supporters. Nothing I can do is I can make that being a Christian something bad or evil, and then I can say they're the ones in the way of progress. So we need to get them out the way. We've got to figure out something to get them out the way. Do y'all see that? Do you see that? Christians are never going to be the ones to jump on board and go with the flow. Immediately, just because the government said do something, we're just going to do it. We're just going to join and do it. No, if it goes against our conscience against God, against you know our conscience to God, to glorify and worship God, or our personal conviction, right, as a Christian, then we're not going to just jump on board and do it, right? We're going to step back and say, no, I don't, I'm, I'm not, I don't feel comfortable with that. And in America, they used to be something that was celebrated. It used to be something that, hey, you have a, a religious stance that you're saying, hey, look, I, that's not something I'm okay with doing. And it's like, okay, no problem. That's, you got an exemption over here. Well, they're trying to remove that as well. Exemption? No. You, you, you must comply. If you don't comply, you know, we're going to label you this. And when we label you this, we're going to get rid of you. That's practice, guys. That's a that's a trial run. That's a trial run. This is all trial run. It's, 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 it's all a trial run. That's what it is. And it's leading up to something that's going to happen as we move closer and closer to the time of tribulation and Jesus' return. It's a trial run. That's all it is. It's a warm up. And so we as Christians have to see this. You just heard this congressman. We have to see and discern these things. And we have to say to ourselves, okay, if that's building up, where do I stand? I say I'm a follower of Christ. 66% of this country say they are. Where do I stand? Where am I? Not just well, am I getting vaccinated or not vaccinated, because you can get vaccinated, it's no problem. You can not be vaccinated, it's no problem. That has nothing to do necessarily with being a Christian. Just like being, being a Trump supporter, quote unquote, does not have anything to do with a Christian. But you do have to look at words like this from this representative, which I'm sure there are more examples, right, of, of, of people who work in the government offices and officials who speak this way and think this way. And it's revving up, it's building up. Right. And it's catching on. Right. And so we have to think through that. We got to understand that this is something that's real and know and, and see what's happening around us. Pay attention and discern. Another example of this is what happened currently with Kyrie Irving, who plays for the Brooklyn Nets. Right. Kyrie Irving is, is you know, a, a critical thinker. Um, he's been made fun of for uh, saying he had. A thought possibly that the world could be flat, right? So he's he's grabbed the whole because of that right there alone. He's been you know made fun of. He's uh, burned sage in the in in the stadium. So he has a different way and a different uh, light of doing things, right? Than the average NBA player that just kind of goes with the flow. Well, he decided, hey, I'm not gonna get because the NBA said came down. The NBA came down and said you gotta get man, you gotta get vaccinated. If you don't get vaccinated, you can't play. And you just lose money. You lose those checks for your games. It's not happening. You got to get vaccinated. So he decided, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. So, so, so sports commentators like Stephen A. Smith, they works for ESPN. He had something to say about that. He called it absolutely stupid. The fact, not Kyrie Irving is stupid, but the idea that he won't just do, just do it. Just for your teammates, man. Don't you want to win a championship this year, Kyrie? What are you doing? Don't you want to? Don't you want to uh, have your teammates win? Don't you want to be on top? Don't you want to get your money, your check from the Brooklyn Nets? Why don't you just get vaccinated? What's wrong with you? This is stupid, right? So that's that's the attitude and mentality he came with. Well, Kyrie responded to that, and he had something to say to that. 
to that idea and that concept. Let's take a listen. We pay attention to what's going on out in the real world. You know, people are losing their jobs to these mandates. Uh, people are having to make choices with their own lives, which I respect. You know, and and I don't want to um, sit here and and play on people's emotions either. Just use logic. You know, what would you do? You know, if if you felt uncomfortable going into the season uh, when you were promised that you would have exemptions or that you didn't have to be forced to get the vaccine. You know, this wasn't an issue uh, before the season started. This this wasn't something that I foresaw coming where I prepared for it. And, uh, you know, I had a, a chance to strategize on what was going to be best for me and my family. I came into the season uh, thinking that I was just going to be able to play ball, you know, be able to use my my talent uh, to continue to, uh, you know, inspire, influence people in the right way. You know, this, like putting this on me is just like, why are you putting it on me? So did you hear that? So the NBA switched it up on him. He didn't have, like, it wasn't like, hey, look, you know, you know, you got religious assumption. We can do that. That's not a problem. And then as it got closer to the season start, it's like, nope, you got to be vaccinated. You can't play. He's like, okay, well, I know people are losing their jobs. And he's saying, I'm making a particular decision on my conviction because I'm thinking about other people. I'm thinking about people who are losing their jobs. People who are having to be basically saying, no, you can't work here. You know what I'm saying? Because you won't get vaccinated. And so he's saying, I'm taking this thing. I'm thinking of those people when I'm saying, also, I don't, well, I don't want to be vaccinated. I want, I, I, that's not what I want. And there are other NBA players who are speaking out as well, right? There's some who are actually, now Kyrie Irving doesn't profess to be a Christian, uh, but there are uh, some other players out there who do profess to be a Christian who are saying, yeah, no, I, I'm knowledgeable about what's going on with the vaccine. Jonathan Josh Robbins with The Athletic. Uh, what is it about the vaccine that, that makes you uh, hesitant to, to, to get it? Uh, I, I would start with, um, I've, I've had COVID um, in the past. And so our, our understanding of antibodies, of natural immunity has uh, uh, changed a, a great deal from the onset of the pandemic and is still evolving. Um, I understand that the vaccine would uh, um, help if, if, if you catch COVID and uh, you'll be able to have less symptoms um, from contracting it. But with me having COVID in the past and having antibodies um, with my current um, age group and uh, uh, fitness, physical fitness level, um, it's not necessarily a fear of mine. Uh, taking the vaccine, um, like I said, it would decrease my chances of uh, uh, having a severe reaction, but it does open me up to the albeit rare chance, but the possibility of having an adverse reaction to the vaccine itself. Um, I don't believe that being unvaccinated means infected or being vaccinated means um, uninfected. You can still catch COVID um, with or with not having the vaccine. Um, I would say, honestly, the, the, the craziness of it all in terms of not being able to say that it should be everybody's fair choice without being demeaned or um, talked crazy to doesn't uh, make one comfortable to do what said person is uh, telling them to do. Um, yeah, I, I would say that's, that's a couple of the reasons that, um, you know, I would say I, I'm hesitant at this time, but at the end of the day, uh, I don't feel that it is, um, you know, anyone's reason to come out and say, well, this is why or this is not why. It should just be their decision. And, um, you know, loving your neighbors, not just loving those that, that agree with you or look like you or uh, move in the same way that you do. It's, it's uh, uh, you know, loving those who don't. So as you see there, uh, Jonathan Isaac is making it plain and clear. He's letting it be known. Look, I'm informed about what's happening with this virus. Not just sit back listening to the president or Fauci or CNN or Fox News. I'm not just sitting back listening to them feed me what I'm supposed to think and how I'm supposed to uh, behave according to this virus. No, I'm informed. I understand what's going on. I understand that I've had COVID, so I've already built up a natural immunity with antibodies. I, I understand that, right? And we're still understanding that, right? So that's been made clear. Um, and so um, it's like, yeah, I know that already. So I don't have to at this time, especially with my, you know, with my workout ration at this time, I don't think it's a good idea. I'm hesitant to take it. You know, and he, didn't, he could have went more detail, but I think the main thing that what he communicated was, I'm thinking critically about taking this vaccine. 
And people need to realize and understand that this is not about, this is not the perspective that you should have. Oh, you're unvaccinated, which means you're going to get infected or you are infected. Oh, you are vaccinated. So that means you're not going to have any problems with COVID. No, that's, that's, but that, but that's how things are communicated. They're communicated in such a way to make you believe that way, which is a lie. It's not the truth. That's not reality. It's not science. It's not the data. It's not, that's not the medical, uh, you know, observation period. It's not. So being informed, thinking critically allows you to come to a solid conclusion about what you know you should do for yourself. Right. And, and based on that, based on that, that should allow other people to see, OK, I'm making this decision. You're making this decision. We're moving differently right now. Your decision is fine. My decision is fine. Let's keep it moving. But for some reason, the media, the people who are in charge of this disseminating information, the people who are overarchingly communicating about this virus and the information about the results of the virus and the results of the vaccine, they're not communicating in this way. If they did. If Joe Biden did, if he did speak about these things, he did bring up the natural immunity. If he did talk about the, just the basic, you know, what's happening with the infections and things like that and, and, and what the end result is of the vaccine and the, and the risk that's involved. If you just simply communicate those things, then people would be like, OK, we understand. OK, we're all informed. So now we're all informed. Let's make a decision, a personal decision. Instead, it's this mandate. Take it now. If you don't take it, it's a pandemic of the unvaccinated. It's just it's just a bunch of propaganda. So what again, we go back to ask this question. Why is propaganda and narratives being used instead of information, facts, data and truth? You say you about the science. I don't see that. I see a bunch of narratives. I see a bunch of fear mongering. That's what I see. But the administration that, that runs this country says they're about the science. That ain't what I see. I can go look at the data and information from your own organization, CDC, the, the, the World Health Organization. I can go look at it and I can see the information and see that you're not giving me science. You're giving me a narrative. You're giving me some perspective that does not line up with the science, with the medical information. So what's going on? What's happening? Right. That, again, that's why we need to be thinking. What's really behind this? What's really being pressed and pushed? That's how we should be thinking as critical thinkers, as as Christians with a biblical worldview, worldview, and also as Christians with the Holy Spirit who's able to discern. So now moving forward, now we have Pfizer now saying the vaccine is safe and effective in a low doses for kids aged five to eleven. So coming up very soon, right around Halloween time, now they're going to say, "Hey, look." We're going to authorize vaccines for you parents who want to protect your children. Don't you want to protect all your kids from this evil virus that is killing everyone? See, that, that mindset and that mentality is a narrative. That's propaganda. That's fear mongering. Christians need to hear that and have it go one ear and out the other and go back and say, hold on. You're, put, you're saying it's authorized and it's coming. Get ready to protect your children. Let me go see what the actual data says about children being infected with COVID virus. I, I can go read it for myself. I got five kids. Let me go read it for myself. So if I just go listen to Pfizer and the news media, I'm going to come away thinking, I have to do this authorized. Let me rush to get my children vaccinated at the nearest location I can find. But, but, but let's take a step back and let's look at the data, right? So it turns out that children make up less than 0.1% of all COVID deaths. 0.1%. That's an extremely small number. So again, the perspective is, I get the vaccination for my children, they'll be safe from the evil COVID virus. Well, we understand that that's not what really is going on. So what we have to ask ourselves is, are children better protected by natural immunity than the vaccination. We have to ask that question, right? You can't just jump out there and be like, hey, look, gotta give my child vaccine. I gotta, gotta have this 
shot injected in them. And that's to save, that is going to save them from this virus. At this point in stage in the pandemic, we got to think a little bit more about this very, very valid question, natural immunity. And it turns out that natural COVID infections produce a stronger secondary immune response than the vaccine. This is a study that just came out in August from uh, the Rockefeller University. They were did, they did a study and it turns out the natural uh, infection uh, that you get from COVID ends up producing memory B cells that get stronger, right? Whereas the cells that you get from, the B cells that you get from getting the vaccine, they start to wane off over time. And which, which means you need a little bit more of the vaccine or another shot. And whereas with the actual, with the, with the natural immunity, those B cells actually give you a better chance at fighting off COVID if you get it again. So the natural COVID infection produces a stronger secondary immune response than the vaccine. And, and important components of the body's immune response called the memory B cells continue to evolve and get stronger for at least several months, producing highly potent antibodies that can neutralize new variants of the virus. So this is something that you have to take into consideration. This is a study that was done that gives us more information. This is what Jonathan Isaac was talking about, that as we understand natural immunity by, by basic understanding of how you get infected with something and then you fight it off and get antibodies. But now as we, as time goes by and studies are done, we understand even more. Well, this is one of those studies that gives us even more understanding. So by comparison, vaccine-induced memory B cells are less robust and evolving for only a few weeks and never learning to protect against variants. That's the, that's the end result of this study that was done at Rockefeller University. So again, is it saying the vaccine is useless? No, it's not saying that. The vaccine has definitely helps protect you and keep you uh, uh, you know, gives you an extra boost uh, to be able to fight against COVID so you won't be severely sick, 100%. But it is not a better solution than natural immunity. It is not. Um, and that's, you know, I, you can say this with clarity, that's what, by God's design. You know, God allows our, our, our bodies, when you have a certain amount of health and your immune systems in a certain state, you're able to fight off a virus, come back, be stronger in case you get infected by that same virus again. That That is how God designed it to be. So this is something that's not discussed. Christians, you have to ask yourself why that is. You have to conclude in your own mind, in your own heart, okay, well, I know I got COVID. I got diagnosed with COVID a few months back, fought it off. You know, family got it. They fought it off. You know, we're, we're, we're good now. So do we need to vaccinate our six-year-old? Do we need to have vaccinated our, our 10 year old? I think we're going to say, nah, we'll pass. Or we're going to say, well, we'll just give them that extra layer of defense, right? But you got to make up in your own mind and your own heart. This is something that you need to do for you and your family. The mandate process, the mandate process, the pressuring, the, the vaccine is the answer. That's how we curb this pandemic joe biden keeps saying that he's being told to say that's how we get around the pandemic that's how we're going to end this thing we're going to end this pandemic if everybody in the country gets a vaccination we know that's not true we know that's a lie we know that's not the case other countries have shown us that's not the case but he keeps saying it and people keep believing it cnn keeps repeating it you know other media sources are keep keep repeating it and so you have to be informed and understand what's best to do based on the knowledge and the information that you have. And going back to why you have to think big picture as well as a Christian. Don't sit back, relax and say, oh, well, you want to fight this, you know, fight the COVID. Fight, let's fight COVID. Let's fight COVID. And, and, you know, get vaccinated. Love thy neighbor. And you get on that whole bandwagon. But you're, you're missing that at some point, at some point, the, the, the phrase or the term or the label Christian will be used as a way to wep go against and weaponize against people who are saying, no, I'm not taking the vaccine. It's already building up. And I played an example of that earlier. 
It's already building up. So you Christian have to think beyond the, 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 the narratives. The narratives aren't, aren't helping anybody. <laughs> the narratives aren't giving you anything to stand on that's real beyond five minutes you know, from now. Think bigger picture. See and discern. Look and see what's going on, right? Anybody that comes up against what the government, public officials, and people that uh, want to be in power and in control and, and pull down and press down these mandates upon children, you know, schools, and so on, so, and jobs, and, 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 and corporations, and companies, these people that want to do this, they're not, you know, they're, they're not thinking, oh, what, is, what's, what do you say? Christian that has this idea, what do you say? What is what how do you feel about it? No, it's either get on board or lose your job. That's how they're pushing it. Get on board, you know, or you're gonna end up uh, you know, with this particular situation, or you're gonna end up in here, you're gonna end up there. This is your consequence, you unvaccinated people. You're filling up our hospitals. It's it's this it's this constant pulling intention to force you to think and, and comply in a certain way and for christians as we stand on the word of god as we stand on our own conviction and personal convictions even for somebody like Kyrie Irving, who does not profess to be a christian but is saying i have personal convictions he's even, so anybody with any kind of conviction to say no i'm not going to do this for this reason no you're an enemy you're not going with the flow you're not doing what is best for everybody See, you see the tactic? So this is the same type of tactic, right? This is the same type of tactic that you have to be able to see will be used at some point down the line when it's time to get the mark of the beast. When it's time for the tribulation time to come. Now, we in the church, we shouldn't be here. We should be raptured up with the Lord, right? We shouldn't be here during that time when it kicks off. But you can see this is practice for that mentality is, is conditioning us to start to think, man, look at what's happening. We better do what the government says if we want to be safe. You better do it. You better do what the government says. They're going to protect us. They're keeping us from the, the bad, evil virus that's coming to take us all out. You see? So, again, conditioning. And, and look at the children. The children gotta wear a mask. Children don't even understand what's really fully going on. Gotta wear a mask. Even though we know the masks aren't that effective in actually stopping the spread, right? Now, let's get the vaccine. Gotta get them vaccinated. And they're just, and children are thinking, okay, well, we don't wanna get the virus, so we better put on a mask. We don't wanna, you don't wanna uh, uh, end up with COVID, so you better get, mommy, daddy, give me the vaccine. Don't wanna spread it to our teachers. You see, it's, it's conditioning. It's soft right now. And it's getting more and more harder. It's getting more and more hard as time goes on. But it's soft right now. But you have, Christian, you have to be able to see what's actually happening. Are you prepared to stand firm on your faith and say no? Not, not no to the vaccine, but no. Government, I, I, I won't not stop going. I won't, I won't stop going to gather with my fellow believers because you say it's not safe. No, I, I won't stop because my Lord, and, my Lord, my God, and my Savior has commanded that we come together to worship, that we don't neglect gathering and meeting and worshiping together, encouraging and building up one another, right? And we know that online can't replace that. It's an additional resource to do that, but it, it can't replace what the Lord has called us to do. Are you ready to stand firm on that? Are you? Are you looking to the sky, waiting to see, Lord, I know, Lord Jesus, you are coming. You told us to look for these signs. You told us to be ready, Lord, to be looking to the sky and be prepared for your return. Are you seeing how things are, are building up towards where we're, what the Bible says is going to happen in the relation. Do you sense and see what is happening? Are you paying attention to it? Are you praying about it? Are you praying for the country? Right? These are the type of, this is how believers in Christ should be moving. No fear. God's in control. 
No doubt. We know what the end result is. Persecution is coming. Protect my children. Disciple my children. Make sure they know the truth of God. Right? Make sure discipleship is a priority in my household and in the place that I gather to worship. So that we are ready with renewed minds, renewed hearts, the word of God, ready to stand firm and be ready for the attacks of the enemy that's coming. That's how we should be thinking right now. Not sitting back, not ready to dive into whatever the culture is saying we're supposed to be getting into, whatever the government is saying we're supposed to be getting into. Guys, the government and the culture are coming, the, the beast that's coming up out of the sea in, in, the, tri in the tribulation time, that beast will, in, without doubt, include government rulership. Without question. Without question. The government will be what draws the worship to the other beast, to the Antichrist. We know that. We know that. The one world government, the one world authority that says we're all coming together to, to, to do this specific thing. And it's going to be a religious type thing. That's another thing, too. Every time you see someone like like this congresswoman that I played earlier that contract that comes up against the Christian faith, right? She came back later in response and said, "Well, I'm a Catholic, and I, I'm a, I'm from the Catholic faith, so I'm not trying to talk bad about Christians. It's just that we have to do this, this, and that. We have to think this, this, and this way. Do you see that? It what? Don't think that they're trying to eliminate Christianity or eliminate religion in general. No, no, no." The idea is to come back to at the when it's all said and done to a one world religion. There's one way to believe, and the government will be the ultimate like authority over what that is. <laughs> the government will be that. That's what we're building to. When I say government, I'm talking about over the whole world. Of course, each country has to come together and make that happen, but it's going to happen. It's it's building up towards that. It's building up towards that. It's going there. Christian, you must discern. You must pay attention. You must pray. You must seek the Lord. You must stand firm and say no. You must stand on the words of Christ, not budge to the left or the right, not be so willing to bow down to cultural uh, norms and standards, governmental mandates, and just, oh, just, just do it. No, think through it. Discern. Listen. Yes, we are to be obedient to, to, to the government that's in charge, 100%. We know that. But if it's going against what God has called us to do as believers, or if it's drawing us away from God in some sort of way, we must be like Daniel. We must say, no, we will serve our, the one true God. We will not bow down. We, we, we can't compromise. If you don't have a heart that, that says, I, I cannot compromise against my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then you have to go back and do a self-test. A self-evaluation. Where am I in my faith? Have I truly given my life over to the Lord Jesus Christ? Have I truly laid down everything that I desire in order to give to what I know the Lord is calling me to do in this moment, in this season, in this time? Have I done that? Or am I playing church? Or am I just doing religion? Does it just feel good to go to church on Sundays and worship and do stuff like that? And, you know, and listen to sermons. That just feels good. And it just makes me feel better about my day. Or is it truly actually ingrained in the how you see the world, everything, how you do life, how you treat, how you uh, treat your children, how you teach your children, how you deal with your relationship? Everything about you is completely centered upon this reality of truth that comes out of the scripture and, and led by the Holy Spirit. Is that what you're engra engraved in? Is that what runs your life? This is why we say God first, life second. It can't be a secondary thought or a third dairy thought, right? Or somewhere in the back of your mind. Oh, yeah, I'm a Christian, so I don't believe in that. No, you should know up front as soon as something hits your face. That's not of the Lord Jesus Christ. I do not agree with that. I do not stand with that. I worship the Lord Jesus Christ, and this is what he says about that. Ready to contend the faith. We must be ready to hold that charge and hold that standard. Because it's just going to rev up more and more. I'm not prophesying gloom and doom. I'm not doing none of that. I only know what's happened today. I went over. I played videos for you guys so you can hear 
clips of what actually transpired recently in the last week or two. I played those things uh, so you guys can hear it and I'm responding to it. I'm not looking forward and saying, look, this is what's definitely going to happen. But you have to be able to discern and based on your discernment, know what's in the word of God and see what the Holy Spirit is saying we're leading up to. Are you prepared for what's coming according to the word of God? That's where I'm coming from. So I hope this is to bless you guys and encourage you guys to stand firm in the word of God. Stand firm in your faith. Do not take narratives and propaganda and just say, I got to listen to the president. I got to use listen to Dr. Fauci. I got to listen to the news media because this is what they say is happening. I just got to believe them. Don't do that. They don't love Christians. They don't they're not for us. They don't see the world we do the way we do. So we know there's a spiritual warfare and spiritual battle happening there between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. So because we're in the light, we have to operate and move like we're in the light by doing research, looking at the information yourself, not just taking news media or the word of somebody else. I'm going to say that multiple times over, because if you don't do that, you will fall for the lie. It, you will fall for the lie. And when you do, it's going to be something that's going to make you start to see God in a different way. Other than what the word of God says, which is how we should see God. So again, hope this encourage you guys. Uh, hope you guys uh, continue to go to the GodFirstLifeSecond.com website spilled all the way out. Also check out some of our shirts and things that we have that continue to promote the same. What you hear me say all the time about standing firm on the word of God, the truth of God, the holiness of God, promoting the truth of God as the standard for what you say and do. A biblical worldview, making sure that's the foundation of how you live and move. Uh, and so our everything on our website is about that. We got sales coming on, uh, come, going on right now. So go check it out. We also got some shirts that are available right down below, right here on YouTube. You watch it on YouTube. Uh, you can check those out as well. But um, go check out the website. We got a lot of different things on there that I help and continue to move you in the direction that I'm talking about, standing firm on your faith, including obviously wearing the shirts with the messages that boldly proclaim that we put God first and life second. Everything in life comes after God. And so I um, want to make sure you guys do about that. Go check out the website. Um, until the next episode, I'm out.